Good morning. This is Pastor Joseph of House of Praise, Church of the Living God. We come to bring you a word from the Lord. We want to thank you for tuning in as you do weekly for our morning worship service. We thank you for taking the opportunity to listen to the word of God. We hope that you are sharing this word with your family, friends, and co-workers. I won't keep you long this morning. I want to talk from a topic of encouragement. And my title this morning is called Keep the Faith. Keep the Faith. If you have a Bible, go ahead and get your scriptures ready. Our opening scripture will be a scripture that I used so many times in the past. But it's really saying really what I want to say about this lesson. It'll be 2 Corinthians 5, 7. If you have a pen and a paper, go ahead and get that ready because we'll be giving a lot of scriptures on today. But I won't keep you long. But I want you to just keep the faith. As we look at the condition of our world and our personal trials that some of us may be facing, that God has your back. With men, things are impossible. Just remember the scriptures and the preaching and the lessons and things that you have been taught concerning God and his word. But all things are possible through Christ. Amen. And if we are his offspring and his children, he will teach us how to face and endure our trials. If we don't give up And that's why my title is called Keep the faith Your faith is very important Because your faith is what's going to see you through And so our scripture reading is coming from 2 Corinthians Many of you know this familiar passage of scripture That I'll be reading from today And I will use it to expound on this lesson 2 Corinthians 5, 7 And it reads For we walk by faith not by sight For we walk by faith Not by sight May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and doers of the world What does this terminology mean? We walk by faith Not by sight Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Corinth And he wanted to encourage them To maintain the integrity of the word of God That he had sown into them And all the teachings he had gave them Concerning Jesus Christ And he said you ought to walk by faith Not by sight Amen. Don't trust what you see. Don't trust what you hear. Don't trust your surroundings. Just remember that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think in Christ Jesus. So keep the faith. That's what my title is today. Faith is essential to the believer's salvation. We will be saved from the wrath of God and the judgment of God simply because we have placed our faith in him and his words. Amen. If you believe the scriptures, and you know that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Whatever God said, regardless of the timing of it, he will bring it to pass. And Isaiah he said that when he sent his for his word to do something, it would accomplish that which he sent it to do. And it will not return unto him void. It's just a matter of you being patient enough to wait on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. We got to remember that God is in control and that we are trusting in him and have placed our faith in him. We need to do just that and wait on the Lord until your change comes. God knows everything that you're facing. Matter of fact, Jesus said, I will never Depart from you. I will never leave you. Lo, I'm with you to the ends of the world. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And he'll go in the fire with us. We've got to keep the faith and remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes, encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. So faith is essential to the believer's salvation. We will be saved from the wrath of God. That means the anger of God and the judgment of God. Simply because we have placed our faith in him and his word. And that's why we study the Bible and we attend church and we go to church school or we join Bible groups or whatever you do to grow yourself in the Lord or in the word. Remember what the scripture said. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for the doctrine, reproof, and correction, instruction, and righteousness. God inspired men to write so we can have hope in his word. Amen. So faith is essential to your salvation. It's not what you do, it's what you believe 
What you believe manifests itself in what you do. So if you believe that Jesus Christ is coming and that one day he will return for the second coming, then live in hope, live in faith, live every day like it's your last day and live a lifestyle that's pleasing to the Lord. Amen. All believers should be living by faith and not allowing the conditions of the world or our personal trials to discourage us from following Jesus. We shouldn't let the conditions of the world or whatever trials we may be facing discourage us from following Jesus. Amen. Luke 9, 23. You don't have to turn there, but just write the scripture down. It says, let a man deny himself, take up his cross daily, Jesus said to the disciples, and follow me. First there must be a denial of oneself. In other words, you should be saying to God, if you're a believer, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Let a man deny himself, take up his cross daily, that's what Jesus said, Luke 9, 23, and follow me. So we should not allow the conditions of this world or personal trials that we may face discourage us from following Jesus if we believe in him if we have faith in him if we have hope in the scriptures then we're going to press toward the mark as the apostle Paul said of the high calling of God which is Christ Jesus in Christ Jesus he said brother I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I'm reaching forward to those things which are before and I'm pressing toward this mark which means it's not going to be easy but it's going to be worth it Amen. Because trials and tribulations and forces going to come against me to discourage me, not to kill me, from believing. Because your belief is what's going to save you. Because what you believe shows up in your actions. Not your actions, your belief. So if you believe something, it's going to manifest itself in your life, in your words, in your actions. Amen. Faith alone and God's grace will save us if we don't lose hope and go backwards to our former lifestyle and habits. Faith alone in God and his grace will save us if we don't lose hope and go backwards to our former lifestyle or habit. When the going get rough, the rough get going. You got to stay with Jesus. Amen. You got to hang in there. For by grace are you saved. Through faith is because of God's amazing grace. And what he allowed his son to do on Calvary on your behalf. Jesus died a sacrificial death. It should have been you and me on that cross. Because he was sinless. He did not sin. But we sin. For all that sin, the Bible says, and come short the glory of God. And the wages of sin is dead. And Romans it said, but God committed his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Keep the faith. He died for you that you may live eternally with God. He went to the cross and became the sin offering, the atonement, the propitiation that pleased the wrath of God on our behalf. It was a substitutionary death. He died on your behalf. Keep the faith because the work has been done. The work has been laid out, but you got to keep hope in God. Go with me to Ephesians 2. 8 and 9. It's for by God's grace that you say, but through your faith. God was merciful toward us, but that's not enough. We got to believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. I want to show you this scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Look what it says. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. These any man should both. Because of God's grace and your faith, you will be saved. There's nothing you can do to earn this salvation. God already done it on your behalf. All you got to do is believe and hold on to your belief. And endure to the end. Amen. Christ Jesus finished his work on Calvary. Provisions have been made. But all will not benefit from his finished work. Because everyone's faith is different. Christ Jesus finished his work on Calvary. Provisions have been made. 
but all will not benefit from his finished work because everyone's faith is different. What does that mean? That means that when the man of God or the woman of God or when people hear the gospel preach, everyone don't receive it. And those that don't receive it won't be saved because the gospel is the only means of way of salvation that God designed to save you. Amen. And what is the gospel? The good news of Jesus Christ coming into the earth and that the kingdom of God has been extended to all. That whosoever could come or would come could come. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And there's a scripture that says that. That when the gospel preached, it's preached to everyone. But everyone don't have faith in what they hear. And so only those that believe the gospel will be saved from the gospel. The gospel is able to save your soul. But if you don't mix faith or have hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you won't be saved. I know that sounds a little harsh, but I'm telling you the truth. Amen. This message I'm preaching to you today, if you don't believe it, it's not going to benefit you. But all those that hear this word and believe this word, word will be saved. Go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. I want to show you that the gospel can only save you if you have faith in it. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Look to your name and say, he help us with the word. He help us with the word. Hebrews 4, 2. When you find say, bless his name. Bless his name. Look what it says. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith to them that heard it. Everybody can hear the same gospel, or everyone can hear the same gospel, but everyone won't believe the gospel or have faith in that gospel. So it's only going to help those that have faith in it, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Amen. Trials and tribulations. Is a part of life. I want you to get that understanding. Trials and tribulation is a part of life. Just because you go through something don't mean God is mad at you. Just because you go through something don't mean you're suffering because of a wrong you have done. Suffering is a part of Christianity, just like blessings are. Jesus suffered, and the suffering he suffered was on our behalf. And he was an innocent man. Yet he suffered because he loved us. Love lifted him. Amen. To the cross. It was his love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his what? Only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him, that's that faith, would not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Saved. But you got to believe that. Amen. Trials and tribulation is a part of life. I know some of y'all attend churches or heard ministers. The way they preach, you're not supposed to ever go through anything. But that's not true. Trials and tribulations is a part of life. But God will see you through them all. Because the scripture says, Great is he that is in you. That he that is in the world. And Jesus said, In the world you should have tribulation. That's what Jesus taught his disciples. Because he knew trouble was going to come sooner or later. But he said, But be of a good cheer, for I overcome the world. Amen. And if he overcame, we should overcome but let's look at what Jesus said. John 16, 33. Look to him and say, he's almost done. He's almost done. John 16, 33. The scripture preached itself. I didn't write it. I'm just reciting it. My job is easy. Amen. I'm just reciting it. John 16, 33. Trial of tri tribulation is a part of life. But God will see you, see you through them all. Because great is he that is in you. John 16, 33. say these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you shall have what? True. Tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen. In the world you're going to have a little trouble. But guess what? But that's why he said, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I don't go away, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will not come. But when I go away, I will send him to you. And Acts, he said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you shall be witness unto me. So let's look at that. Great is he. And all believers that are placed in trust in God. God seals us with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. Amen. So let's look at that. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 4. 1 John. 
at the back of your Bible, New Revelation, 1 John, chapter 4, verse 4. I'm going to show you that great as he does in you, that's the Holy Spirit. Keep the faith. You got to believe that God is able to do a city abundant above all you ask a thing. Amen. First John 4, 4, look what it said. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. We are the offspring of Jesus. All believers are the offspring of Jesus. That means we are his children. We are little Christ or Christians. Just like a, a sheep or a lamb could be the baby of some sheep. And so when sheep have babies, they call lambs or ooze. But a lamb and a sheep is the same, one of the same. But a lamb is immature, but have the same characteristics of their parents. Amen. And if we are the offspring of God, we have the same power and authority that Jesus has because he gave it to us. And I'm going to show you the scripture that he gave it to us. And that's the only way you can receive this power. Remember the title of this message is called Keep the Faith. That's why I'm encouraged. I'm entitled to press on regardless who quit. We used to sing that song. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Though no one join me, you know the rest. Still I will follow. That sounds good on Sunday morning. But guess what? When the scriptures have revived me, I will continue in the Lord the things that he have given me, given me authority to do. Amen. Because I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to believe what Jesus says instead of my circumstance. I'm going to believe what Jesus says instead of my circumstance. Because my circumstances will tell me I can't make it. My circumstances will tell me give up. My circumstances will tell me throw in the towel. My circumstances will tell me to quit. But great is he. That is in me because that's what Jesus said that he does in the world. Amen. We are the offspring of Jesus. And if he overcame, we will be victorious in our efforts if our faith fail not. Matter of fact, Jesus said the works he do, we should do also. He said the works that he done, we should do them also. Let's look at that. Look at the name. Say, he almost done. He almost done. John 14, 12. John... 14, 12. I want to encourage you in the word. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Amen. We walk by faith, not by sight. Don't let your circumstances dictate your, your, your blessings. Don't let your circumstances dictate your outcome. Amen. John 14, 12. When you finally say, bless his name. Bless his name. And it reads, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe it on me. See, believe it on me. That's that faith. You got to believe in it though. The works that I do shall be, he says, very, very, I say unto you, he that believe it on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to the Father. That's what Jesus said. If you believe on me, the works that I do, you shall do what? Also. Also. <clears throat> Now let's look at Luke 22. Jesus told Peter, Peter, Satan wants you. He desire to have you and see if you as we. <coughs> he said, but I pray for you that what? Your faith fail not. If you keep the faith in the things that I've taught you and you walk by faith, not by sight, Satan can't touch you. Only if you quit or go back to your former life or habits. Satan can do whatever he will because you quit trusting God. In other words, having faith in God and his word. Amen. And Jesus told Peter, Satan wants you, but I'm praying for you that your faith fail not. Let's look at that. In Luke 22. Luke chapter 22. When you finally say, bless his name. Bless his name. Luke 22, 31. It says... And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Look what it says. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Jesus said, 
I know the devil wants you. He desires you. He wants to have you, Peter. But I pray for you that your faith fell out. In other words, I pray that everything that I taught you and everything that you witnessed and everything you have been, been a part of in this ministry, that you hold on to those things when I'm gone. Because Satan wants you, but he can't have you as long as your faith fail not. Jesus said, I pray that you will keep the faith, Peter. Amen. That's basically what he was saying. Not that you have gifts of healing or speaking tongues. Not that you walk and do anointing. Something simple as, I pray that your faith fail not. I'm getting ready to close. Jesus gave, this is what I want to bless you with. Jesus gave every believer power to be victorious over anything we may endure but we have to use that power willingly. He can give you the power, but if you decide you ain't going to lose it and you're going to let your circumstances dictate your outcome, then the power you have is useless because you won't walk in that authority that he had given you. And I'm going to show you two scriptures where he said he give us the power. You already seen the scripture where he said the works, if you believe on me, the works I do, you shall do also. Keep the faith. Let's look at Luke chapter 10. We are already in Luke 22. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke 10, 19. When you finally say, bless his name. Bless his name. Luke 10, 19, and it reads, Behold, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the what? Enemy. And nothing shall by any means what? Hurt you. If you use it, I'm giving you the authority to exercise power over the devil. But you got to use it and you got to believe that you have that authority. Amen. I'm going to give you another scripture and I'm closing. Matthew 16, 19. Matthew 16, 19. This should encourage someone right here. You didn't know that you had the power. All you got to do is keep the faith. And doubt not. Jesus said, if you have enough faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to your own mountain. You don't have to pray, ask nobody to pray for you. You speak to that mountain yourself, and that mountain got to go over yonder. Amen. If you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, Matthew 16, 19, when you finally say, bless his name. Look what he says. Bless his name. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whoa. Jesus, you're going to give me the keys because the, the teachings that I gave you, the authority that I gave you, that was all the keys of heaven. Yes. He said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I give you the authority. Why are we going to all these prayer conferences? And anything, we go to a prayer conference, we should be the one hosting it to help other people that don't have the faith and the strength that we have. Because the scripture teaches us that the strong are the bad and firm is the weak. Amen. If you're strong and your brother weak, then you ought to be carrying your brother. You are your brother's keeper. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name.